we are representing our data in a graphical form that's by using our programming it helps in understanding test theories and quantify relationships as well as predict outcomes second one is logistic regression it is used to deal with the categorical outcomes h0 is a constant which is nothing but a null hypothesis value Hello everyone I welcome you all to this very first session of unit 4 that's under statistical computing and R programming the unit 4 is all about our statistical testing as well as modeling this is one of very very easy unit where you can score very well with respect to exams point of view and you can get more number of expected questions from this unit So over here my name is Deepa Kutnikar I'm working as an assistant professor under department of computer science Vidyashram Temple of Excellence Mysore So let's see what's the agenda of today's session In today's session we will be learning like what is statistical modeling as well as statistical testing then we do discuss the sampling distribution up next we will be learning what is hypothesis testing and in order to do that hypothesis test what are the different components that we include with respect to testing procedure so these are the things what we discuss in our today's session so let's start with understanding what exactly is statistical modeling because we read or will be learning with respect to testing in our upcoming slides starting with statistical modeling so this modeling is very very crucial when it comes with respect to our data the data generation is very very crucial because we are representing our data in a graphical form that's by using our programming correct when we are representing our information in a good graphical way then it will become very very crucial in order to understand like what are the components that we have to consider and how to model our waveform right with respect to deal that we have to learn and understand the statistical modeling statistical modeling is nothing but the data generation process through which we can get the relation that's not just a relation that is a mathematical relation between stochastic variable as well as non random variables or in general way we can say it gives us a data generation path in order to deal with mathematical relations that's between random and non random variable that is all about our statistical modeling this statistical modeling will allow a capability to allow the probability or we can say we will be calculating probabilities under the specified considered assumption so there will be few assumptions and based on that assumptions we will be calculating probabilities with respect to data so it is all about our data or data representation or we can say a statistical modeling up next let's understand what is the purpose of statistical modeling or why we have to go with modeling our data right this modeling will helps us in understanding the patterns of data also it helps in understanding test theories and quantify relationships as well as predict outcomes exactly that is very very important by using our statistical modeling we can predict the exact outcome next we can say that we will be getting a complete structure for inference if there is any inference or if there is any interaction also if there is any prediction yes we can establish a structure like exactly the statistical data will be representing in this form or it may come in this form like that so we can predict the outcome so that is the main purpose of our statistical modeling up next by moving with hypothetical testing or we can say by statistical modeling we can evaluate the empirical support for hypothesis through which we can say like with respect to this formula we have worked and through that formula we can expected output through this we can represent our data in a exact way that we want our data to represent so this is the main purpose of statistical modeling also we can say like statistical modeling and the testing should go in hand in hand if it goes in hand in hand only then we can expect the best results so over here we can say modeling and testing are complementary they work 
best please note they work best when both are integrated so this is all about the purpose of our statistical testing next let's understand like when the statistical model becomes so easy and we can represent the things whatever we can through predicting our outcome we can see like what are the different types that we can utilize in order to represent our data so that's our next that is types of statistical modeling so starting with the regression model first one is linear regression it is completely used for continuous outcomes second one is logistic regression it is used to deal with the categorical outcomes or if you have any categorical variables then you can directly go with our logistic regressions so these two are very basic if you want to work with different patterns then you have different regression techniques for example more advanced forms that is like time series survival model multi variant model as well as decision trees so these are few examples of more advanced models through which you can correlate your data with respect to time series or with respect to survival variables and with respect to decision making ones as well so this is a more advanced forms so finally we can say how the model selection is done that's by using decision diagrams to choose appropriate models based on data type as well as the research it's exactly whatever the data or the model that we select is completely dependent on the type of data on which we are working all right so these are the different models with respect to statistical modeling all right let's go forward with sampling distribution sampling distribution is the probability distribution of statistics under repeated sampling so please note under repeating sampling where we will be assuming h not has 2 here h not is a constant which is nothing but a null hypothesis value so this value or the null hypothesis we will be discussing in our upcoming slides okay so for now we'll just understand like exactly it is a type of repeated sampling where we will be assuming our h not has 2 all right so here the thing what we have to know is h not has 2 up next let's see the next theorem that is very very important when we deal with our samples so that is central limit theorem so this theorem states that with random sampling the distribution of the sample mean tends towards the normality as sample size increases so what is that the sample size increases even from non normal populations even from normal as well as normal population the sampling size will be increasing so that is all about central limit theorem next one the applications in r like what is the exact application with respect to our sampling distribution the main application of sampling distribution in r is it is used to represent the simulations that's by using a very very important keyword that is replicate of so this is a keyword if i want to go ahead and work with our sampling distribution so we can say through that we can approximate the sampling distribution also it is used in modern inference in order to deal with the tools like modern drive workflow or to demonstrate the different steps that are included in our testing patterns so that is nothing but a sampling distribution and central limit theorem that is very very important when we have to describe with our sampling distribution up next is the hypothesis testing exactly this is where we go forward with advancing our data that is by using our hypothesis test so hypothesis test is a structured statistical approach which is used to assess if sample data provides a strong enough evidence to reject a specific claim so each and everything works on the claim over here like we can say there is some assumptions so that assumptions will be dealing with our testing procedures so here with respect to specific claim that is the null hypothesis 
where we can say about a population characteristics whenever we consider an example or some dealing data that is with population characteristic or with respect to a sampling data set all about these things then we can say the null hypothesis we can claim okay so that claim is nothing but a hypothesis testing now let's see it relays on probability as well as the sampling theorem so this hypothesis test is completely dependent on the probability as well as the sampling test next let's see the components of our hypothesis testing this is very very important the first one is null hypothesis i believe you remember the h not we have discussed in our sampling distribution right so now it's a time to understand like what exactly is this h not is this h not represents the default assumptions like typically there is no effect no difference or no relation exists it stands as a position to be tested and potentially rejected like we can say whenever we have a assumption of no effect no difference and no relationship at that time we can say the h not or the null hypothesis exist up next is a alternate hypothesis which we can represent by using h1 or ha which says hypothesis alternate or alternate hypothesis so this is a statement that signifies the presence of an effect or difference or a relation if there is no effect no relation then we can say null hypothesis if there is a effect and if there is a relation that exists then what we can say we can say it has a alternate hypothesis it can be represented as h1 or ha is a significant level which can be represented by a simple alpha so this level significant so it represents a threshold so it is a threshold probability where we can say commonly it will be approximately nearby to 0.5 and it represent the chances of wrongly rejecting the null hypothesis whenever there is a chance of rejecting the null hypothesis then there exists a significance level and we can say it is used to decide the prior data collection and analysis next component is a test statistics it is all about a numerical summary that is used to calculate from a statistical data so it helps in determining like how far the observed data deviates from the null hypothesis expectation so this is all about a test statistic up next so till now we have completed four test statistics the first one null hypothesis second one is the alternate hypothesis third one significant level and the fourth one is a st test statistic next is a rejection region or a critical value from basic we have learned this the rejection value or the critical path so again we are dealing with the same that's critical value where we can say that it is just a range where the test statistics or the numerical data falls within that limit and the null hypothesis is rejected over here next this critical value is completely dependent or we can say the critical value is defined based on the null hypothesis as well as the test statistics this is all about our rejection region or a critical value the next component is a p value so now we did understand like whenever our null hypothesis is false we can directly deal with a critical value or represent a critical value now if our null hypothesis is true then the thing or the component what we can define is a p value or we can say it has a probability value where it is used to observe the probability of the test statistics or sometimes we can say the more extreme null hypothesis or whenever we consider the null hypothesis has true we can deal with a probability value or the p value so we can say a small value of our significant value or is greater than or equal to the significant value then the strong signals evidence against h not whenever the value of p is greater than or equal to 
alpha, then we can say the, the signals provide a strong evidence against our null hypothesis or a H0. Up next is a decision rule. So now we have calculated many components like a null hypothesis, then alternate hypothesis, test values, p values, everything is done. So up next, what is that? That is a decision rule. So depending on these values, we will make a decision. We can say if p is less than or equal to alpha, at that case, the statistic falls into the rejection region or we can say the null hypothesis is completely rejected. Also, we can say if p is greater than our significant value or alpha, at that time, we are failing to reject the null hypothesis. All right. So, these are regarding the components and almost we are done with our consideration, defining and predicting as well as calculating different values. So, finally, we will be heading with conclusion as well as interpretation. So, after a decision, we will be concluding like whatever the data we have calculated, it is according to our assumption or this is a value that we have got by considering null hypothesis has zero or null hypothesis has a false or a true. What are those? So, those are being represented by our final conclusion. So, over here we can see we can get a clear context rich statement. Also, we can say there will be a rejection of null hypothesis where the evidence supports the null hypothesis. Also, whenever it failed to reject H0, insufficient evidence. But we can say there is no equivalence. Okay. Whenever we get a null hypothesis rejected, then we can say like the evidence supports that null hypothesis or whenever the thing or the prediction fails to go with the H0, then at that time what we can say that evidence are insufficient and we can say that the evidence is also not equivalent with respect to the calculated values or the required values. So this is all about a hypothesis testing procedure. So this was all about today's session and in the upcoming session, we will be discussing about what are testing means, testing proportions, what are testing categorical values. Also, we will be understanding like what are the different types of errors, what are powers related to our statistical data. And finally, we will be discussing the ANOVA, which is very, very important topic with respect to exam point of view. That is none other than analysis of variance. All these things will be discussed in the upcoming session. So this was all about today's session. Thank you.